wrong to trade before a major news release? Depends who you are. Mm. So uh, three approaches to this. One, you either have a model that can model the outcome of the actual news release. And when we say news release, we tend to mean economic releases which are quantifiable as numbers. So if you have a model, so certainly I know that maybe 10 years ago at Merrill Lynch, they were very good at predicting non-farm pay payrolls and they got, you know, top every year or something like that. And they had a particular model and they were able to make a prediction and so sometimes made money, a lot of money on, on, on these predictions. If you don't have a model and you don't have access to the raw data, then no. Then you might want to trade during the news release, but you need the speed. And a lot of brokers, especially on the retail side, will just stop quoting. Even Interbank will sometimes just widen their bid ask. Or you can trade after the release. So given that the first two before and during is as all these challenges, especially for non-expert traders on the retail side, trading after the release is probably much better. But then it comes the time frame. Do I want to trade intraday or long term? So we gave that example of that Mario Draghi in 2014 where his statement about QE more or less precipitated a multi-year trend in euro dollar that once you were short made you a lot of money. Um, or is it just a trend that's over the next six to seven hours and you want to capitalize upon that? So that again corresponds to the individual psychology. But ultimately it comes down to understanding was the release important? Because sometimes a release is just made out to be this big thing, out comes the numbers, and it ends up to be a wet squib and nothing happens. So then there's no, not even a point in participating. So let the market talk for you. What does the phrase, buy the rumor, sell the fact, mean when it comes to Forex? So given that Forex, in terms of trading, hasn't been around as long as stocks, usually what it means for stocks is that, especially during um, analyst announcements and recommendations when they come out, you tend to find there's been a lot of studies done on this that somehow information leaks out prior. Some parties, I'm not saying it's insider trading, whatever, just, you know, people talk, especially on analyst recommendations, which are not as sensitive as earnings announcements. And then the market gets bid in terms of if it's a good announcement, then people sell to capture the profit. And there's something really interesting here. The people who tend to make a lot of money are not necessarily the people who sold right after the announcement. It's usually the people who tend to then hold it going forward. And so, what this really tries to say, at least in the equity markets, is that there's profit taking prior to a particular belief. And it's the same here. The reason being that as people start to express their viewpoint ex ante, they bid the market up. And then all of a sudden, once the news comes out, well, it's already old news. And so everybody who now comes to the party, well, you can sell them at a high price and capture your profits. If the news, of course, has been worthy enough, it'll continue and that's where the real play is to be made. So it's, it's a statement about the fact that you're trying to find the bigger fool in the market. Now there's something really interesting, it doesn't always work out. The classic example, at least in FX, was Brexit. And I remember watching, I wasn't actually, I was in South America at the time, and you know, it looks, it's looking good. Sterling dollar is moving up to 150 and all of a sudden, some news out of Sunderland comes out. And this is, Probably in the UK was maybe 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock at night, and in South America was like 9 o'clock in the evening. All of a sudden the market starts to stumble. And then, I don't know, I'm sure you know people who are awake in Japan or China said, Sunder, what? And just said, screw this, and just sold it all. <laughs> you can imagine that kind of reaction, because who knows what, what a Sunderland is. And so obviously then it started to collapse, and literally it just, just went down like a waterfall. And what's really interesting is everybody thought that it would be or it was a set case for Remain and that Brexit would lose out. And so that was a classic example where buy the rumor, sell the fact, just didn't get you anywhere. How should I trade news releases on employment data? Non-farm payrolls. So, okay, so employment data, there's two numbers that come out. There's the number that comes out every Thursday and then there's the monthly number that's to a certain extent backward looking that comes out at the first Friday of the month. And so that tends to have a much bigger impact because you also have the unemployment rate coming out, you have new jobs coming on board, labor participation, etc. And the reason that that's so important, it has been so important because there's, each news release has a phase in history when it is important and it's not important. Nowadays it's really important because there has been over the last couple of years because people were trying to anticipate at which point will the Fed start to hike interest rates again. I mean, you must imagine we've been in this zero interest rate regime for eight years. And so that's a very long time. You know, people just get pinned to one thing. And of course, any chance of increasing rates is going to shock people. Um, and that's why right now, the last eight years, it's been so important because the release 
as we said, will affect central bank policy. They set the rates and they make statements and that'll affect massively the currency market. So that's why it's such an important number or has been recently, in the last couple of years. Um, how to treat that thing is, going back to buy the rumor, sell the fact, if the outcome is not much different from what's expected, the market doesn't have to change its expectation of the future. So nothing happens. So there's no point in trying to trade these non-farm payrolls if they're in sync. So an interesting question to ask is, what happens if they're massively out of sync? Does anything happen? And actually, yes. First of all, you do get a follow through on that particular day, as you would expect in terms of if non-farm payrolls are very strong or much stronger than expected, that's an indication that the economy is picking up, the slack is going out of the market, and therefore the central bank most likely will increase rates to maintain um, price stability. So therefore, higher rates in the dollar would push the dollar up, and you do tend to see that happen over the short term. Now, what's really interesting is that these numbers get released on a Friday and weekends, or the open on the Monday afterwards tends to have a highly mean reverting effect on the currency. So what tends to happen on the Monday, the move from the Friday tends to be covered. So depending on your time horizon, you can either trade it intraday, right after the release, which tends to be at 1.30 p.m. Uh, British time, and then trade that until the end of the day. Um, or you can think about waiting until Monday open and then just fade the move to the other side. So again, it's interesting here. One number, yes, a certain possible outcome, but different time horizons and different strategies. The million and one ways to skin a cat.